Seven things they don't tell you about travel nurses. Welcome to Stronger Nurse Universe. Travel nursing is a pretty sweet career. If you enjoy seeing new places, getting to practice in diverse communities, and making that good money. However, even the best jobs have risk. Are you an aspiring travel nurse? Check out this sage ass advice from this seasoned veteran nurse who has seen both the light and the darkness of travel nursing. Here's what the agencies won't tell you, but we will. One, your contracts are anything but simple. For each assignment, there are three contracts in place. And y'all know contracts are legally binding. There's one between you and the agency, one between your agency and the hospital, and one between you and the hospital. Understand your requirements and responsibilities under each one. This often means diving deep into those nitty gritty details too many times a travel nurse has gotten a gig that seemed absolutely fucking amazing only to find out that they get very few days off or even worse have to float around to the client's entire hospital system don't be afraid to negotiate the best terms for each assignment some key perks to make sure that you have in your contract is tiered pay for the first 36 hours and regular weekly shifts overtime pay, health insurance, guaranteed hours, a housing stipend if you decline company housing. Number two, your assignment may have pitfalls and hidden money. Here are some sneaky provisions to be aware of in your contract. Now, this is a question that everybody asks. Will you be expected to float? Short answer is yes. Some travel nurse contracts expect you to float between multiple hospitals, potentially up to 25 miles away from your original assignment. Read the fine print, honey, because that can be logistically and mentally draining on top of financially because there is gas money and it's tearing up your car. Other thing is, do you have guaranteed hours? If so, what happens if you miss them? If you call out from too many shifts from mental health days, you can lose your daily stipend and potentially incur a penalty if that's written in your contract. Be aware of how many hours you've promised to give your agency. Otherwise, you could end up voiding your entire contract and end up in legal trouble because your agency will sue you. What happens when your contract is extended but there is no additional travel needed. Sometimes you may not receive an additional stipend because you're technically not traveling. Always check the terms before you sign. Is your agency covering the cost of compliance documentation? Don't forget to ask for reimbursement. They will try and stiff you. If you don't ask, you could be leaving so much money on the table or essentially paying for all of your lab results out of pocket and that stuff adds up. Number three, I'm gonna tell you something that I've struggled with for a long time, and that's traveling light. If you're a nester, or a better term, a hoarder, <laughs> you may be tempted to pack dozens of bags with all sorts of knickknacks and personal effects. Resist, okay? Resist the temptation to stuff your car to the top so you can't even see out the rear view mirror with all your belongings. I did it on my way back from California. If you're in company housing, basic furniture and appliances are usually already provided. And even if you're booking your own accommodations, scale down the luggage, sis, scale it down. Transitioning from place to place is always, always super stressful. And you'll sometimes need to move in a hurry. And I have done this too many times in my career. I Identify the core supplies that you need, clothing and creature comforts to make you feel at home, away from home. Then get your packing and unpacking game down to a science. Number four, keep your future in mind. Travel nursing is a wonderful way to explore the world while pursuing your career. Some aspiring travel nurses think of it as a short-term arraignment until they find a place that they'd like to land permanently. And that's fine, but keep this in mind. 
You can contribute to your retirement from, from your agency assignments. Your agency usually likes to match your contributions, but there's typically a lengthy vesting period unless you work for Epic Travel Staffing. Wow. That means you'll need to stay with the agency for at least four years, sometimes five to collect your retirement benefits. In short, be diligent about saving for your future. And in most situations, you should plan to continue travel nursing for at least a few years. Number five, contract cancellation can leave you high and dry, honey. It happens to most travel nurses at some point because it happened to me. You're en route to an assignment only to have it canceled. Literally, you didn't already book the place, put the money down and everything. You ain't got no job. Or your assignment ends early and you're facing the prospect of being jobless and potentially homeless for a few weeks. That's why it is crucial to have a healthy savings account so you can stay afloat even if the contract ends prematurely. Another consideration and something you should always check in your contract is if you will get your housing stipend if your contract gets canceled. Often, if you signed a lease for your own housing, you gonna need to fulfill your commitment to that lease, even if your contract ends early. If you took company housing though, and missed hours due to cancellation, or your contract was canceled completely, your housing should be covered until you're reassigned. Now the GSA, Government Services Administration, determines the maximum amounts for travel stipends that can be dispersed without receipts. This means there's effectively no requirement that housing stipends actually be paid out. This means there's effectively no requirement that housing stipends be paid out by your agency. Always consider your assignment risk before choosing your housing option. And, 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 I can't stress this enough, have enough money in your savings to cover any unpaid rent. You still gotta duplicate expenses. Number six, it's a lonely road. Let me tell you, loneliness is real on the road. Even the most introverted travel nurses like myself can feel isolated at times. The melancholy is very real. There's no one traveling with you and it can be difficult to connect with other staff nurses at your assignment location. You truly have to learn to really be me, myself, and I and rely on yourself and keep your chin up. Maintain a reliable support network whenever possible. This can be friends and family members that you call up anytime they can be mentors who can talk you down from a bad day and even your recruit. Sometimes they can be. In fact, having a recruiter who understands your goals and has your back is critical to travel nursing success. Number seven, you're going to grow so much. Travel nursing is ultimately a great way to build resilience. Because no matter how much you prepare, I guarantee you there are going to be some stressful times. You'll need to learn to rely on your confidence and adapt to quickly shifting circumstances. Because trust me, it happens. In short, get used to living outside your comfort zone. The most successful travel nurses develop an adventure mindset and an ironclad intuition. And in the end, this will not only make you a better travel nurse, but just a stronger nurse in general. The final word. I hope you found these nuggets of wisdom and the Stronger Nurse Universe extremely helpful. Travel nursing has its challenges, but as a resilient, confident, professional travel nurse, I trust that you're now well equipped to tackle them. Not quite there yet, eager to be an even stronger nurse? Our Stronger Nurse community is here to support you. Extra important on those long, tedious, dark, lonely drives to your next assignment. Subscribe now and gain even more valuable advice and support on your nursing journey. Mwah! This is Stronger Nurse. I'll see y'all in my next video.